question, please. Yes, question. Um, my uh, question to both to either either one of you who can say is that when we're talking in modernity and you have it's not it's Islamic fundamentals rising and you have secularism rising, Pakistan and the other day is Islamic for Pakistan. Where would you think that this modernity, the secularism, or or which form of Islam we don't know what philosophy Islam is going to fit into the democracy? I mean, we're talking about. Uh, <coughs> middle class which is just becoming a little bit more modern that there is the early class which out of, uh, has, has broken our records and gone to, uh, to an extreme end then you have the people who are taking on voluntary jobs where do they all fit in? Uh, secular Islam, a secular government in Pakistan does not seem possible to me where are they all going to be married and meet and live and be after? I don't see a possibility with that with so many different philosophies of religion, so many different philosophies of secularism, so many different philosophies of, of modernity, where, where are they going to fit into that to become a harmonious uh, uh, country? So how will all jail together? Why do we need to agree on having just one definition of something? See, what, you, what we need, um, I was part of this process, uh, the Planning Commission of Pakistan uh, was working on a paper vision 2030. Uh, they collected about 70, 80 people, I was one of them. Uh, we were divided into smaller groups. I was in a group which looked at the future and structure of Pakistan and state. So one day we were sitting in this meeting and we had these retired bureaucrats military and civil. And they suggested that let's have, let Pakistan be a modern, secular, uh, you know, secular state and no other vision should be allowed. There was me, there was a gentleman uh, who's worked in Balochistan, <coughs> been there for years. We had a problem with that statement. We said no, multiple visions should be allowed in any society. It's just that the state should not should remain neutral to one or the other. We agreed on a principle, 1947 is an Islamic state, you know that's a bare minimum. Let's keep it at that. If somebody wants Sharia, let them go and struggle and talk to people and convince them. If somebody is an atheist and wants to sell that, let them go and do it. If somebody wants a secular state and to define its secularism, let them go and do it. Let not the state then become party to one or the other. For the past 35, 25, 30 years, we've had a state which is deeply involved in encouraging, raising, aiding and abetting militancy and militancy. Right, which has changed the flavor of the society. Let's stop doing that. Because, you know, you, you just had elections and what, what you figure out is that, you know, people did not excessively go towards the MMA, towards the religious party. So when, and, you know, the went and opted for, uh, you know, for the ordinary political parties. Um, I accidentally come from uh, South Punjab and what I see is a very interesting phenomenon. I'm sorry, I'm going to take just half a minute more. I, I see a very interesting phenomenon. I mean, South Punjab is an area which has probably contributed after frontier, uh, contributed the greatest number of jihadis, Kashmir, Afghanistan, everywhere else. And yet, it is an area which is again abandoned, uh, abundant in prostitutes and gambling and drugs and all of that. What I find very peculiar and interesting is that they both tend to coexist. These are our societies. You have different forms coexisting. Uh, why does the state have to put itself on one side or the other? Uh, let them, you know, through, through you know, a much more civilized way uh, kind of negotiate that. 
you know, a woman who wears a hijab, uh, let her find that, let her create her space. Uh, eventually, she will understand whether she wants it or she doesn't want it. For many years, uh, in rural areas, and again I speak of South Punjab, you had young boys who were going to jihad, right? Once I called some young boys in my village, uh, I asked them who, who might heard were going for jihad. I asked them, I said, you know, if I were to ask you to shut down your eyes, close down your eyes and think of a future, what would you think of? Started to laugh. I said, we don't even shut down your eyes, we don't see it. And so it was in that vacuum that extremism, jihad also emerged as an option. It is linked with poverty, it's linked with social economic distribution of resources. And I don't think that it is such a major problem that cannot get solved, that at some point we will not find a value. Very good. We will take uh, two more questions. And, uh, I have a question for David, but he's already shown Okay. Thank you. 